Hello and welcome to the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Creating and Sharing Copyright Protected Materials in the K-12 Context. Today is a big day for Taylor. As a new drama teacher, they're excited for the beginning of the school play season. Taylor will be working with some of the other teachers at the school to make the students' production of the musical The Music Man the best it can be. But Taylor is also a bit apprehensive. They have been reviewing the copyright resources that the Copyright Consortium of CMEC, the Council of Ministers of Education Canada, provides for K-12 educators. What copyright rules might apply to the students' theatrical production, they wonder? And how does copyright apply to students' creative works more generally? After consulting CMEC's Copyright Matters and speaking with the school principal, Taylor discovers that the student production of The Music Man falls outside fair dealing guidelines and users' rights defined in the Copyright Act for copying and performing a copyright protected script, even though the purpose of the production is educational and does not involve a motive of gain. Because the audience will include students' families, friends, and other members of the community, in addition to the school's students and staff, and because a small admission will be charged to cover the production expenses, the school needs to obtain permission from the holder of the play's production rights. Taylor will also need to make sure that they and their students respect the playwright's moral rights, which deal with the integrity of the work and the right of the creator to be associated with it. While the school's principal works with the school division to obtain the production rights for The Music Man, Taylor goes ahead with planning the production. Jesse, the music teacher, suggests that the school band could provide live music for the production. They need to keep in mind that licenses may be needed for performances of live music or playing recorded music from collective licensing agencies such as SOCAN and ReSound. Jesse informs Taylor that determining when permission or a license is needed for music is tricky and dependent on several contextual factors. Jesse reminds Taylor they will need to make sure they get enough copies of the play's musical score for the full school band. Although fair dealing guidelines allow teachers to provide a single copy of a short excerpt from a copyright protected work to each student enrolled in a course or class or participating in a school production, a short excerpt includes only up to 10% of a copyright protected work and certainly not an entire script. And the same applies to musical scores. Before Taylor figures out how to get these materials for the school, Jesse shows them a full digital copy of the Music Man script and musical score they found online. Since it's so easily available, why don't they just make physical copies of these for the students? Taylor thinks they should first ask Kyle, the school library employee responsible for ordering new school resources, if there is any problem with this plan. Unfortunately, both Taylor and Jesse are disappointed when Kyle tells them that this would be an infringement of copyright, since the digital versions Jesse found online are unauthorized copies. Even though some resources, including text, scores, sound, and video recordings may be freely available online, that doesn't mean they can be copied or printed. However, Kyle is happy to help Taylor find the right editions of the play's script and musical score and submit the purchase order to the principal. Taylor is also working with Carmen, the head of the English Language Arts Department, to design lesson plans and a project during which the students will learn about the play and ultimately create posters and a website based on their interpretations, which will be used to promote the production. Carmen reassures Taylor that these projects, as new works that the students will create on the basis of the copyright protected work, The Music Man, fall within the Copyright Act's users' rights. Students' fair dealing rights and the provision for non-commercial user-generated content, while not without limitations, will likely allow for the uses Carmen has in mind for her students. Taylor wonders, though they've been focusing so much on whether the school production of The Music Man meets copyright guidelines, what about the student-created works like the posters and website being created by Carmen's students? Are they protected by copyright? Taylor doesn't wonder for long, however, because Carmen knows that any original work created by a student, whatever the media or form, is protected. They just need to make sure that the students, or more accurately their parents or legal guardians, since the students are minors, authorize the further use of their works beyond the class assignment. 
But what about the performance itself? Some of the students' parents have asked if they can record the play on video for their family viewing, and students have expressed the desire to post videos of their performance online. Taylor isn't sure and checks with the principal to see if this is covered in the performance rights agreement. The principal notes that an extra fee was paid for parents to record the performance for family viewing, but not for distribution online. The principal reminds Taylor that she always checks in detail what rights are and are not included in various agreements. Taylor's teaching colleagues and their students are all looking forward to taking part in the big school production, and Taylor is even more excited than this morning now that they are certain that, along with the students' talents, copyright will take center stage. You should now be able to identify what copyright protections apply to student works created in the K-12 educational context. Recognize that various licenses, royalties, and creator permissions, in addition to Canadian copyright rules, may impact student theatrical and musical performances, and understand how students can create new works from copyright-protected works. This has been the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Creating and Sharing Copyright-Protected Materials in the K-12 Context. Thank you for your attention.